All right. Okay, you're live. Okay, very well. Thank you. Calling motion, the motion to open the motion. To, yes, motion to open the uh, uh, Roebland uh, Town Five Forty. Um, I think government we'll study. That. Yeah, we'll second that. Five Forty. Thank you, Michael. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve from September 29th. Second motion to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, very well. There are two agenda items this evening, and for the benefit of the public so that they can uh, continue to follow what uh, our work is, and um, we uh, agreed as a committee that I would have an opportunity to actually read briefly the uh, minutes from previous meetings. This way here people can sort of connect the dots and follow us along. Public input is always welcomed. If anybody does have a question about either this process or would like to provide a question to this committee, uh, kindly forward that request to the chair of the Board of Selectmen, Michael Wood, and he'll forward to us, and uh, we can address some issues or questions that the public may have. Certainly, these are public meetings, and with uh, necessary precautions, uh, we, we do certainly recommend people watch the uh, proceedings either live or a recording. So our um, agenda for this evening, the reading of the minutes from 929, and then um, a big uh, item here is a review of an initial draft of a document um, uh, to advise the Board of Selectmen uh, of implementation methods to lead to an appointment of a town manager or town administrator utilizing both bylaw initially and also subsequently a special act. And then the third item actually is discussion and potential votes uh, to advance the work for the subcommittee which was formed on October 29th. So uh, what we did is we formed a subcommittee consisting of uh, Mr. Osborne, thank you, John, and uh, John Christopher, and they are uh, embarked on the process of uh, beginning the writing portion of our study group, uh, and that is to produce uh, the initial draft of a, um, uh, of a document that we will uh, ultimately present to the Board of Selectmen. So without further ado, uh, September 29th meeting, in attendance was uh, myself, uh, Mr. Osborne, Mr. Dempsey, and Mr. Christopher. We opened the meeting at 534. Uh, the motion to approve the minutes uh, for September 15 was, uh, was made. And then we uh, began a review of existing bylaws. Uh, the more got uh, the bylaws for the personnel and finance manager. He stated that uh, additions were made to the responsibilities of the finance manager finance director. Later, votes were taken to add personnel duties to the finance manager without changing the bylaw. Mr. Christopher reported that the administrators are commonly in charge of personnel. We could keep the finance manager bylaw the same and add a reference to the personnel bylaw to correct it. So just as a little bit of a background, again, for the public, two ways that we can implement a town manager or town administrator, either by a special act of legislation or this committee is looking at the possibility of doing it in what we call the two-step, and that is uh, first utilize existing uh, bylaws or produce new bylaw um, effectively, uh, and then after a period of time we can approach um, the legislature at the state level to uh, enact a law called a special act. Other municipal bylaws. Uh, Mr. Osborne looked at 21 bylaws, thank you John for your work, from other towns. He thinks we should find one we like best and add what is needed. It will save us from reinventing the wheel. Christopher, Mr. Christopher wants to avoid verbose bylaws and thinks we should write our own. Mr. Osborne stated that Stowe, Stowe, Massachusetts, is the one he liked best. Perhaps we should have a subcommittee look at them all and find the best one. An iterative process could be used with the rest of the committee to review additions and changes so we could come to an agreement. Mr. Dempsey agreed that writing a document by committee can be difficult. So Mr. Osborne asserted that it's Stowe, Berlin, Pepperell, and North Andover are among the best and he discussed how he came to that conclusion. Mr. Dempsey asked how much time the finance manager duty typically takes up uh, the town administrator job. Mr. Christopher said maintaining the bylaw and referencing it in the position could help decrease the time and finance could be split off. 
uh, Mr. Osborne stated that the another important role is building uh, is 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 uh, building or property management. Uh, in this, in the past, this was under the, uh, the uh, under the finance manager. Mr. Demore asked if we were too small for a town administrator. Berlin has 2,800 residents, and we have 65, so probably not was the um, uh, the consensus of the committee. Mr. Dempsey added that we are one of the very few towns in the state that does not have a town administrator or manager. The consensus of this committee was that we want a town manager or administrator and not a hybrid finance manager. A few more items. Mr. A motion was made by Mr. Osborne to approve recommending a two-step method, as I uh, re referenced earlier. That is by bylaw to be followed by a special act in the future to get a town manager or administrator. And this was seconded by Mr. Christopher, and the vote was unanimous. A motion was made by Mr. Dempsey to establish a subcommittee composed of Mr. Christopher and Mr. Osborne to examine the best of other town bylaws to come up with a final product. I seconded that and the vote was taken. That was unanimous. We we're going to review the process. Mr. Osborne said we need a basic skeleton. Uh, I think you said you used the word sketch to start with from other <laughs> town bylaws that look interesting. We will all get to rewrite, add and change things. General discussion ensued. I uh, said that a survey is probably not necessary, but a public session will help. Uh, the selectmen will need to get on board and be the ones to sell it to the town. Mr. Dempsey asked if we could, if we should uh, get input from town managers. That was a very thoughtful idea, and Mr. Osborne thinks that it's too early. Uh, Mr. Christopher suggested we get a draft bylaw together first and circulate it to department managers to get input. So here we are at this uh, next meeting um, that was referenced in the, in the, in the minutes and, and we're sort of on our way to uh, exploring the two-step process where we will initiate um, advice to the Board of Selectmen that in order for us to implement the town manager or town administrator, we're going to do it by a local Groveland bylaw first. And part of the general discussion that we had was that we are, of course, you know, that gives us also an opportunity to kind of work the kinks out of it a little bit and, 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 and modify it and, and also get input from the town managers, town, uh, town administrators, department heads, and certainly, um, ultimately, the people will make the decision at town meeting. But we hope to have several meetings prior to educate people on how we do that. So, so here we are. So the second item on Joe, our agenda you, tonight is the work that was done by Mr. Osborne, Mr. Dempsey. Joe, can you sign that for me? Yes, now? I will. Absolutely. So, would you like to open up, Mr. Osborne? Sure. Please. Thank you. The first step, of course, was to have John and I, John Christopher and I, decide which was uh, the best and could we agree on which was the best format that we would follow. And we agreed that the North Andover document was essentially um, the best format that we could mutually agree on. Um, and as a result, we, we started working on that. I also did a survey of uh, basically all of the town manager stories are, or ma administrators, they're all, they have a basic format which everyone has however I looked for all the changes that were outside of that framework that seemed to be applicable to us and so I scarred through the 21 and found out uh, some of the anomalies or special conditions that seemed to be appropriate and I tried to incorporate some of those into a list of other items on top of that um, I, uh, I looked at, uh, excuse me a minute, I'm trying to think. Um, I looked at the, uh, uh, the Nahant uh, group, and Nahant had an extremely nice uh, condensed version of all the items that we thought were important in uh, duties and, and, um, 
uh, and powers and duties. Um, and uh, we incorporated the Nahant piece into the, the North Andover document so that essentially it's a hybrid of some pieces of Nahant and mostly the material from North Andover. And that's where we are at this juncture. I, I might add too that we we did uh, we did do some own independent thinking and added some things that uh, yes weren't in those bylaws. Uh, we also changed some language. We also uh, just eliminated some things we didn't think were necessary that were in those bylaws. Uh, I kind of like in this process. I've come to the realization this is like I said making sausage. <laughs> Not pretty while well it's happening, but I think the product will be. Yes, I think I just wanted to get out tonight that the, the two things I think, given the situation we're in, the most important is that we've added language in the bylaw that one reference there's language that any bylaw in town that conflicts with this bylaw, this bylaw controls. Specifically, that's directed to personnel and finance. I don't see finance being a huge problem because I think the selectmen, when they get the town administrator, can just designate him or her the finance director. The problem I see with the personnel bylaw is from a, a legal standpoint is that we can, we can, the selectmen basically are operating under that bylaw as the personnel directors. The idea would be to make the town administrator personnel director. However, you know, the bylaw is, not perfect with respect to even the selectmen's, uh, you know, role in that. So I, I think that bylaw particularly could give rise to the most lawsuits. Because should what mo could give rise to the most lawsuits yeah. in the future? Because when people are laid off or they get fired from a job, they run to lawyers. And so I think that's the bylaw. After this, that's the bylaw we need to really uh, tweak and make it flow right into this town. I think for the way it's written now, we can get by with the personnel bylaw being incorporated by reference. Because we also have language in here that the selectmen can uh, appoint the town administrator to any duties that are not necessarily expressed herein, but are within their responsibility under statutes and bylaws of the town. So I, you know, I, th that's what I wanted to bring out tonight, that uh, we're kind of incorporating by reference a lot of stuff just to get to the first base of the town administrator, but I think you know, there's going to be an ongoing process of culling out other bylaws so everything flows generally into this one, assuming town meeting uh, approves. There was another issue that I guess disturbed me a little bit, and that was the document that was sent out recently called the Summary of Comparison Table Showing Duties and Responsibilities of Grove and Administrative assistance and financial director versus town manager and administrative positions. In it was outlined daily operations of the town and also legal and personnel sections. And one of the concerns I had was that uh, a lot of it has day-to-day -day minutia of things that the, that person is responsible for. It seems to me we can't incorporate a lot of this detail in the document. I agree. I think what we've got to do is put that, if, if, if the selectmen decide that it's the right thing to do, is to put the details of this in a contract when they sign the person. So then there needs to be someone who writes the contract that incorporates these ideas. Yeah, though these came from Kathy and this was a review of the job description. Okay. So either the contract or the job description okay. could be valid. Exactly. Rep, not exactly. the bylaw. That's right. Yeah. I don't want to incorporate, as I say, the minutiae of this, but in our document well, it certainly won't be contrary to this document, these documents or these items, but it makes more sense to make sure that that is put into the contract and not into this document. Yeah, I said to John, we don't want a bylaw that says the town administrator shall report to work at 8.30, <laughs> enter through the front door, take a left down to... You know, exactly. That, that yeah. 
Well, uh, a bylaw should not be as granular as a contract. Exactly. Uh, it cannot be because it'll be too restrictive. Right. But you and John, and I'm sure Mike would agree, and I'm speaking for Mike, but I, 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 I see the the risk um, of of um, you know litigation or things going wrong. If we go ahead and implement a town administrator or manager by bylaw and just do nothing at all with the personnel bylaw, so we have to do at least some referencing, at the very least, correct? I, I think we've we've done that. We've done that. You've yeah. done that. Okay. The thing, the thing is, in looking you, at the you've done that in your draft. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I'll I'll read it to I you. Okay. He's, he's referenced with, to operate as personal direct director with reference to the personnel bylaw and the personnel procedures manual. But right now we have a in the personnel bylaw, it's supposed to be a five man person. The uh, selectmen now are operating as that committee. Right. So I think that that language needs to be cleaned up. I'm hopeful that we'll have a, a process where employees are disgruntled with what the town administrator does. Yeah. They'll have an appeal process as a final appeal process to the selectmen to as a grievance. Uh, there is it. Well, in if I, oh, I'm sorry. No, please do. Um, Absolutely. I'd like to read section G of what we put in this document in, in reference to this discussion. Be the town's personal dire personnel director in accordance with the provisions of the town's personnel bylaw and personnel procedures manual. The administrator shall conduct annual evaluations of department heads with the exception of the chief of police and the chief of the fire department. Fire department. Now, I, I hope that that dovetails in reasonably. It's not too specific, but I think it dovetails in fairly well. And, and we, we, we also understand, too, is that uh, collective bargaining agreements present a whole different scenario for the town administrator and the uh, selectmen. The, the rights of the parties and those are governed by the collective bargaining agreement. And we've stated that, yeah. too, in here. Does it... Did you say that the uh, person does the bargaining with those bargaining units? It, we said that if the selectmen so designate, the personnel administrator, excuse me, the town administrator can negotiate the contracts. Item M says negotiate collective bargaining contracts on behalf of the board of selectmen unless the board shall, be, shall have designated another negotiator. That's not foreign to me because when I was on the school committee, we expected the superintendent to do the negotiations on behalf of the people, okay. literally. Um, I, I, I don't know if we, I actually don't know if we had the authority to say, no, we're, you know, we want to take that back. I don't think, but, but it, at the town level, you can do that. We're going to designate the town administrator to enter into negotiations, but the door is still open for the board of selectmen to say, yeah. We want to handle this. Or they could even ask town council to handle. Or they can have, and, and that would be the case in most cases. If it's a contentious situation, it's because the board of selectmen would want to hopefully reduce litigation and therefore say, you know what, we're going to handle it, and we're going to have the town council handle okay. it. Okay. So. There are a few other things that I'd like to bring up. Yes, of course. Um, we talked about this personnel board. We talked here about. One item here is to coordinate the activities of all boards, committees, and commissions for which the Board of Selectmen are the appointing authority. Now, maybe that's a little broad in scope, and I wanted to put that to you. Do you want to consider that a reasonable assertion or not? Please look on your document and look under J. Let me read it. I did read this from top to bottom, but it was more of a scam. J, J, J. Section, which section? Section 2. Section 2, okay. S what, what does that mean to coordinate activities of all boards? Yeah, I know, but that, that I... I went along with this, but I can understand that. Uh, Is it too nebulous? I think it's a little bit. 
Mike's, well, you've been on more boards than I have, and you have too, but when I was on the zoning board, we basically just took care of our own business, and if, if we had a town administrator, if we had a problem, then we'd go to him. Uh, we didn't have that, so we'd go to the selectman or Nancy for help, but, uh, but coordinating activities, it's really, what activities do they have other than posting a meeting and filing their decisions? And Some of what needs to be done is to get the boards to work together better. Mm -hmm. And this has been happening with uh, our town planner in place. I'll just give you an example. She has coordinated and comp uh, kind of compressed some of the interaction between planning, zoning, conservation, the building department, where there's commonalities like uh, monitoring of projects. Now, we used to have all separate monitoring. Now we have one, mo usually for, especially for larger projects, we have one monitor who monitors for planning and conservation. We don't have to have separate ones. That, that's, that's what she's been doing. Yeah. And that's, so, tr that's traditionally what a planning, planning department or a planner does. Right. <coughs> Those kind of things need to happen more. Mm -hmm. So I, I like um, what it says to, to um, coordinate, coordinate the activities. activities, as long as that's what it's understood yes. to mean. Yes, but wouldn't that be a job for a planner, like Mike has just described? Because the, the boards that are, we have a finance committee, but we have the planning board, we have conservation commission, we have the zoning board that, that have a big impact on the town <coughs> and the things they do. So you think it should be the planning board? Well, no, planning, the planner. Sorry, the, uh, the planner. 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 But see, there's other departments, you know, the tax department, the, the uh, water department, well, that's finance. A, that's another know. issue. That's the, the, the water is a totally different issue. Yeah, right? but I mean, sometimes the water department has to coordinate with what conservation does. And, it, and it's like sometimes it's twisting people's arms to get to make it, make it happen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we know only too well. Right. <laughs> um, I, may, I may offer the word facilitate instead of coordinate. Okay, facilitate. Okay, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, that that's a better word. I like that. The coordinate is more authoritative. Facilitate yeah. is more consensual. I think the way I envision it working, if we still have a planning to, a planner, uh, not that I know she's not going to go anyplace, but if we still have that position, it's a good administrator would leave everything up to her and only intervene if there seemed to be some type of yeah. problem. Need a good delegator. I have a question if anybody can help me with. If I work uh, for the highway department, who's my boss? Boss is the, uh, I, I would say, it's the Board of Selectmen. Board of Selectmen, right? Well, overseeing it in the highway department, is high, the administrator is appointed now. It's not elected. So for personnel issues, uh, let's say I need to, uh, I have sick time or I've got questions about, you know, um, renegotiating my vacation time, or I mean, yeah. the, re the way this who reads, does that? the way this reads is that any any department, any board, uh, if the boards like com conservation, they're special employees, but I'm talking about highway uh, department particularly. They're, the way this reads that any department wherein the selectmen have the power to appoint the department head. You know, they answer to the town administrator. To the town administrator. Yeah. And, and the personnel powers that the town administrator has. And right now, staying with that line of questioning, if I was a, you know, a member of the highway department, my ultimate boss is the board, at the moment would be the board of selectmen. Well, actually, right now it would be the finance director because they actually. Yeah, no. yeah right now. They actually um, made that change. The appointing authority is, is the selectmen. But the selectmen through this are delegating that 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 day-to-day -day power to the it administrator. Has to be delegated. That's yeah. the whole. Well, point. this is what it does. Yeah. yeah. That's. I think if you read the preamble, it kind of sets out what the the roles of the. Well, the selectmen what I liked the about the preamble is that you know we're not just doing this by the seat of our pants. It's actually Massachusetts law that guides our ability to create bylaws. Yep. Chapter forty-one, section twenty-three A. So that's good. 
<laughs> so we're not customizing or you know doing things. We're, we're we're following you know the legal guidelines set by the state on how to manage ourselves with with bylaws. Uh, can I go on to the next item to, Please do. to, to <clears throat> ask a question of the group? Um, I'm going to read this. It's uh, item V, and on the fourth page, the administrator with or without request of any town officer, department, board, committee, or commission shall be responsible for review and initiation of all state, regional, and federal grants which may be financially beneficial to the town. He or she shall be responsible for the oversight, review, and completion of all grant applications except as otherwise authorized by statute, and seek the advice and consent of the Board of Selectmen whenever any grant requires financial commitment of the town. Does that sound reasonable? I, I, I just wondered if it's we're giving him a, an awful lot of work. For example, I think the plan... That's what my concern yeah, is the, the planner, I know writes grants and you've written grants so maybe you shouldn't have to do that no but you want to make sure regardless of who's writing them mm -hmm. you want to make sure that they never get out unless the select somebody know sees about it, yeah. them okay so that's okay what we have okay the other item is the review uh, w following is Review the town's current master plan and after appropriate evaluation, implement any recommendations in that plan. Now, I'm really using your comment, um, Mike, about the master plan that might be collecting dust somewhere. Yeah. Did you want to put that in or do you want to ignore it? I, I would put it in and say um, somehow, uh, develop and or update the master plan <laughs> because I don't I don't think we we nobody even knows where it is well you that's know. that's the master plan that recommends hitching posts downtown for the yeah, buses yeah. And, the trouble with that is that it's asking the the administrator to be jack of all trades again like we're doing the planning issue here I think we, we don't want to have uh, the, the task so onerous that no one will want well, the I, job. I think what they do, though, is with master plans in general, they usually get outside consultants to come in. Yeah. So he, a lot of that would, if he, they have the money, would go to a consultant who would then present it to the administrator. And it wouldn't be like he's sitting up till midnight writing okay. up a master plan. Okay. So. Um, you want to put that in as develop an update? Yeah. Okay. As needed, as necessary. Okay. And then... I the want to challenge one thought about that. The, oh, yeah. The sure. town is... The town may be developmentally um, in a spot right now where, you know, it's, I, would, I would say it's mature. So five years could be a short time frame. You, know, you can have a master plan for, with a 10-year outlook. I mean, our roads are built... You know, our parks are built. Uh, our spaces are pretty much, you know, what they are. There isn't a, I, I just don't see a lot of physical changes or evolution going on in our town. So a five-year plan, what do we, you know, what, what uh, might be too short? Well, this doesn't really limit. It doesn't mention five years. It's well, it does. A, it does. The one I have, I'm looking at says. Oh, okay, sorry. So you, we, yeah. if, I, if we change that to uh, develop in coordination with other departments, a five to ten to ten year master plan, kind of leave it open. Well, I, I think I sent out corrected versions. And if I don't, you that's right. version, I don't know what version you've got. That's but right. The new yeah. version yeah. is W. And the corrected, you'll get another one in about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I do have a, a question also. I want to go back a little bit to W. Okay. The do W want... doesn't mention any time frame. Right. Okay. No, Review that's... the town's current... Master plan, or re not review, but develop an update. Develop the town's master plan. Okay. Develop yeah. an appropriate evaluation implement. We can change that more logical wording. Now we'll have the concept. Um, 
next and last item that I, I needed to get off my chest, which is really R Y, um, which you might not have there. That's in the old one. It inform the Board of Selectmen in a timely manner as to the town's emergency planning and preparedness. Does, should that be in there or not? Um, there is overlap that with the police department. Fire. Do they communicate with each other? Oh, I'm doing it. <laughs> Do they, do they do it in a timely basis? To, to, I mean, is it, is it a regular procedure that the uh, chief of police and the fire department will come in every three or four months and be on the agenda to do that to the selectmen? Uh, so we don't need it? I don't know. I think we do. Oh, I, I, okay. I think it's a good At least idea. coordinate that, make sure that the, the proper people come in and, and discuss. Okay. Yeah, we can be a little bit more explicit, you know, to coordinate with the public safety professionals of our, of our town. Okay. We have a public safety complex. It's, you know, bilateral, bicameral, if you will. Right. Fire department, police department. Um, my experience on the Board of Selectmen is that they would, uh, you know, come in and provide you know, reports and updates to the Board of Selectmen, which has always done well, my experience. Why don't we make him a coordinator? To I think coordinating. There's the word. That, that's there's where we can put the word coordinate in. I think why don't we, safely co coordinate with public safety officials to yeah. update the board of selectmen yeah. pertaining to the towns. Coordinate yeah. with well, oh with the emergency planning group. With just, how about public safety officials? Oh, oh, coordinate public safety officials. Safety officials to update the Board of Selectmen, or regularly update. We'll use regularly, and we'll, they'll decide what's regular. Regularly update the BOS pertaining Maybe to... Maybe annually. I, I don't think it's going to be changing that much. No. Well, but, but, you know, let's just use regularly. If he decides once a year... Yeah, regularly. If, if yeah. we're in a tough situation and the yeah. barbarians are you know, coming mm. down on the town, that we need to talk every two months instead. Okay. All right. Um, the other thing that I guess what struck me as I was looking through the summary of this minutia that Kathy Castanellis had presented to us um, was this idea of taking care of um, the recreation department. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to have been a thorn in a lot of people's sides. Yep. Do we want to incorporate anything about um, dealing with that particular issue, or does it come under the committees and whatever? That's facilitating boards and... Okay, fine. Is there a particular reason that we should have the reference the uh, Recreation Committee? Or? Only that nobody does it, and so that's why she got stuck with it. When you say she, you mean... Kathy? Denise. Oh, Denise. Well, th we could put in that quad facilitation thing that we could put specific language including the town recreation. See, the, the, the town really needs a parks and recreation department or something. Well, that comes under, that comes under establishing new departments yeah. and getting rid of departments. I think that's he covered. Can re he can reorganize. With, with the Board of Selectmen. With the Board of Selectmen. Approval. So I, I don't think we need to incorporate that then, I think. Yeah. I, think I think we can, that's, a, that's a, how can we say, a, a work in progress. Yeah, we don't have to mention the Recreation Department particularly, but the, I, I, th I believe the language is in there to be able to right. allow the time. Well, there, there is language in here broadly that says he, that, he, that they can assign to him any duties not yeah. expressed in this, but under their supervision. Right. And recreation certainly comes under their supervision. So, you know, if, they, if, there's a, if there's a problem with, you know, coordinating it, they can just say, town administrator, I want you to focus upon recreation. I, I have a couple of questions. Uh, is um, section um, can't read it. <laughs> left wing. S, 
Is that redundant with sec with uh, item H? We we have some redundancies here that we're yes. We're going to start. Uh, we're going to start shrinking cleaning them. them out. Gleaning. Just don't skip letters. We'll okay. You'll confuse me. <laughs> I know that, that we this is disjointed even as it is now. This is great work. Initial draft. It's wonderful. And. Um, so there's no mention of uh, information technology here. Okay. But I would say it would be the same as recreation. They would be in charge of it, but maybe they. Do we do we have a with all due respect? Do we have an inf a rec IT department? To, no. They have a well. She was doing uh, again. Yeah, Denise, Denise was doing it, but then uh, in the end she hired a company to be doing it. So right now a company's doing it, but. You know, like nobody's really coordinating it. So well, for example, the, the the fellow that's here tonight filming us, how how do they get in touch with him to come down, and who who's responsible for that's that? That's Denise or no. um, what, like the selectman's uh, secretary. Well, that's certainly that would be Catherine. Warden. That would be the town administrator overseeing yeah, that to make sure it gets done. Yeah, yeah. and he he could just you know. Just say, look, we need we need someone here every night or every Monday night to film these things. Let's make sure we we have yeah. someone. I don't I don't know if it really needs to be included in here. No, no. It, it it's again, it's probably more in the job description yeah. type of thing. Have you read the whole document now? I did a scan, read like I read it all the way through, and I reread a few sp spots and. I had a couple of questions for when you're ready. Any thoughts? Uh, when you're ready, Mike. Uh, any concerns? Uh, we, we did put in something about um, making sure we had uh, uh, the administrator is the um, chief procurement officer. Procurement officer. Thank sure, you. Yeah, that needs to be in there. Because I, I, that. I knew that that was something that you were concerned about. Chief with, with compliance officer. Chief compliance. With the, the exception of your uh, chief financial officer, with the exception of the uh, fire and police, as yeah, far as course. procurement, that's correct. And, uh, so um, at this juncture, uh, I think we uh, are getting close to uh, finalizing this thing, uh, and I suspect within the next two or three weeks we can do that. Um, and then I think once we've done that, and you've read it. Thoroughly, as opposed to scanning, scanning it, <laughs> um, and, and as a result, make a decision, a, an informed decision, whether you want to move it on to the selectman. Is that the plan? Well, that's a plan, but I still have some questions. Okay, <laughs> shoot, shoot, we're so, ready. All right, I, I'm going to solicit your best advice because I don't really know how to handle this, but in my experience especially when the stuff hits the fan there's a um, uh, an easy trigger finger on the gun if you will of calling town council and one of the promises of a town administrator of a town manager is hopefully it will reduce litigation and it certainly will reduce the the bill the invoicing from town council now my experience with town council on the board of selectmen and on six years on the school committee has always been wonderful very dedicated people very protective of us very capable of getting us into tr out of trouble when we got ourselves into trouble so with that said i saw the language especially in section w where well let me read it to you And, and, and then I'm going to ask for your advice. Can we? Uh, this is regards to the master plan. Yeah. Can we take a recess? Uh, 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 what? Let's take a let's take a five minute recess. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, why don't you show me at the moment yeah. what section?
Okay, thank you. We're reconvening at uh, 622. The question that I had for this committee is, I, should we have, should we allow the town administrator to contact the town council for any matter with or without pre-approval from the board of selectmen? I, my, my I view, about that. my view on that is, If you're, there's a spending issue if you have someone repetitively calling for every little matter, especially when they're charging by the hour. If you have someone on retainer who gets a set amount of money, then people can call at all hours of the night, which my, my concern has always been if people are limited to calling town council, they may be making decisions without that benefit of, of town council's input. and. Uh, I would think a professional administrator would know a lot of, uh, have a, not even if he has a legal background, but would just have a sense of municipal law and what might not be appropriate or what is appropriate and I can move ahead without having to consult town council. I think a lot of the, the calling of town council in, in this town would probably be due to the fact that you know, it's mostly a volunteer run community with the exception of the people at town hall and we finally got a finance director uh, some of the, like for example, West Newbury, at least the last time I knew, the town clerk was actually uh, town council and he was on a set salary and I'm sure if they got sued for multi-million dollars then they'd go out and hire some law firm to represent them. Right. Uh, so, but I think access to town council, uh, you know, if, for, if the administrator had to wait two days to contact the board of selectmen, the issue the issue may rise to the top of a, a lawsuit before he can get advice to town council. That, that's, it, it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing. Uh, he'd have to justify himself, you know, I'm sure the selectman would look at the legal bills for that month and say, what are you doing? Right. So it, it's a better tough to, issue. Better to address it on the back end than to yeah. create restrictions on the front yeah, end. The restrictions. Your, your idea. And, and if this person is a professional, they'll know when and when not you know, contact legal counsel. May I suggest you put your mic a bit closer? I oh, think it, you can't. Not, you're quite a long way away from it. You know? Do you have any thoughts on that, John? No, no. That I, I d defer to somebody who knows a lot more about the legal issues than I do. No, I, I don't have any thoughts on that. And as the principal author of the draft, should we put s explicit language in there about that somewhere, like in that section B? <laughs> Section V. It v. was W, but you changed it to V. That's why we had. I came well, over. It, this is. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not even close. So the administrator, with or without request of town officer, department board or committee or commission, shall be responsible for review and initiation of all state and regional federal grants. That's nothing to do with well, this. Well, I, I, my apologies. I, the, the question is, I guess, do you want do do we want to add something what Joe's talking about? <coughs> ah, no, that's Similar different. To that. yeah. Similar to that. Oh, yeah, not, I, not, 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 not specifically in that section. My, that was, <coughs> I, I presented that incorrectly. That was my Well, my um, you could say something like uh, <coughs> use of town council shall be limited to the administrator or manager, but, uh, but not restricted or something like that. Well, yeah. the beauty of this is, is for example, if someone at on the zoning board, or the zoning board has an issue. In the old days, you you might want to you'd call a selectman, and maybe you'd get them, and then they'd have to you know it, it was very time consuming to get legal advice to a lo down to the board level or conservation. Whereas now you know the chairman of the zoning board could probably pick up the phone and tell the town administrator, "I'd like to get an opinion from Copeland and Page or whomever the council is," and that could be done within. 24 hours. Well, we'll incorporate something that you want. Uh, I've got, I think, the gist of it. I think both of us have got the, the well, sense two, of it. There's two components. First of all, the town manager or administrator's engagement with town council, which we just reviewed. Um, I think we're in agreement then with John's premise. The second part is a lot easier. If the chair of the planning board needs legal advice, now we have an easy path, and it would be nice to have the language to show that. 
call the town administrator, get permission from the town administrator first before you proceed. It'll be quicker than the old way of, you know, finding, <laughs> waking up a uh, board yeah, of selectmen in the night. But uh, haven't we covered that when we say coordination with, coordination with the town administrator with commissions and boards. Well, why don't we say including legal matters? Including legal matters. That's okay. It's the legal piece. What, what that section is that you're writing on, John, so I can? <clears throat> it's a legal piece because that always has been a, a bone of contention on, on both boards that I've I seen. I don't know where it's going to be okay. at the moment. I'll just put a note here. B-A. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's not B, that's for sure. <laughs> Mike, any thoughts on that? No, that's perfectly no, uh, okay. I, I think that's fine. Um, the way the way it is now, you have to ask legal questions of the finance manager. Only she co talks to legal the, counsel. Engages directly, right? You never usually get to do it, right. which sometimes I don't like that. But no. you know, well, if if you had a and I'm not advocating one way or the other, but the beauty of having uh, an attorney on a retainer uh, is that even the, the one person on the zoning board, even if he isn't the chairman, could theoretically pick up the phone and call him. And you know, I have a- Do we have, to, do we have our legal people on, on retainer? Oh, they, they charge by, I think they get a, a minimum of Last time I knew it was like five thousand dollars. Yeah, you get like then a they block. bill above that. You get like a block of okay for five thousand or whatever it is. You get a so okay. many hours, and then after that, I, I think if you go over to the, some other towns, mostly the larger ones, their legal department they have a solicitor and two assistants, and they're all on retainer. And then if something is very large that you know you don't expect someone to handle a big matter for the money they're being paid, they yeah. go and get outside counsel. But th those are relatively rare occasions you know and, and even and even in those situations when it feels like free advice like if there's an issue where you have the insurance company involved and you have the legal counsel of the insurance company yeah. we still want to maintain those I think those protocols where basically we're uh, relying on the town administrator to control that access to legal even if it feels free for example we're not paying the legal fees of the insurance company if there's an insurance matter and they're yes, defending the town with some issue. It's called premiums. <laughs> but other than the premiums, <laughs> indirectly. <laughs> Which may go skyrocketing depending what happens. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, now, those are, and I got a couple more. On, yeah, I was going to say, I, what else? So I did got? okay. You know, when I read this, I said there's something. So does the town have any, and this is more of a legal question, we have two departments that are quite unique. One is the electric department, and the other one is the water department. We have no oversight, control, authority over those departments yeah, at I know, all. I know for a fact that the light department, they're a separate entity. Like totally like separate ones. entity, protected. So is the supported department. Is, is that the way it's set up? Yeah, it was set, it was set up, the, 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 it was new state regulations about 10 years ago. Okay. And the state wanted them, wanted them to be separate. Because that, is it called enterprise funds? Mm -hmm. I think the, you know, I think the way to probably gain more control over it, the water department would be to have it more appointed commissions that are uh, answerable to the appointing authority through the town administrator. But that's for another day. And light plant. That, that comes under the section where we say responsible for and review with the Board of Selectmen, you know, the new structure. Yeah. Or any structures that are recommended. Light, light plants are almost like separate corporations. They have their own statutory structure yeah. and uh, Section 6, Responsibilities of Administrative Reorganization, page 6. And you know, the reality is the hope of this particular committee is that we do implement the town manager by, by law and then have this person act as a, a consultant for us to make changes to, to the departments, to bylaws and to changes. Instead of us trying to do it all up front it's like 
you know, hope, you know, instead of hiring a consultant, we're going to have one heck of a consultant called the town administrator that yeah. we're going to rely on to to continue the work effectively to continue the work that is part of our charge. As long as it's generically broad based, like Section Six, Item One, deals with it. The administrator may be, with the approval of the board of selectmen establish, reorganize, consolidate, or abolish any department or position placed by this bylaw under his or her supervision and control. Except, Except as otherwise provided by the general laws of the Commonwealth of Mass, the provisions of another town or another town bylaw. So I think we're covered. Well, the legal effect, in my opinion, of a bylaw, should, it should feel like a policy should not be a contract that should not be rules and regulations and you know minutia like you mentioned the word minutia so I think I mean it, I think the work that you and John have done thus far is 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 well done it's it's broad enough to allow the flexibility for professionals to come in and um, manage our town, especially with dwindling volunteerism and um, increasing threats of litigation and more complexity with taxes and compliance and, and procurement. I mean, that's our hope. That's, that's the point of, of why we all wish to do this. And hopefully the town people will agree once our work is completed. So just a legal piece probably was the biggest concern I had. I, I felt it should be really explicit because it was always an issue on the boards that I was on. Well, we have, uh, John and I have made notes on it. I'm going to think it out even more over the next few days and come up with some language that may be satisfactory. And on the other issue with the enterprise funds, I, I don't have a, a specific vision or desire or, uh, that we need to quote unquote control or take over or have more control over the electric department or the water department but with that said uh, it's interesting what if they want to reorganize or they want to give up some authority what if well that's know? the point that's why at this juncture once this document is finalized yeah then we go to these departments and ask them what do they think yeah and we'll get their input, and then we can revise it yet again from their input. The, the, as I, I'm somewhat familiar with municipal light plant law, and uh, from their standpoint, they're, they're basically almost a, a power unto themselves governed by the, the statutes and Department of Public Utilities. They, they call themselves the Grove Municipal Light Plant, but they're really, uh, and they do a good job. Yeah, but they're, they're regulated by a whole different body of laws. And we could have probably have more success of getting the water department under the ambit. Hmm. You know, I know in the larger communities, the water departments are part of the Department of Public Services. Yeah. So that, that can be done. But the light plants kind of, they're a special organization. Yeah, I mean, we're very fortunate. We have you know, two excellent departments, uh, electric department, I mean, the service, the, um, I just, I just want to make sure that, you know, we, not make sure, but I want to, I want to see, we want to explore in this town administrative position whether there's an opportunity for engagement and modification of those departments, especially if they're requesting it, well, which I think potentially may happen with one of those departments. Yeah. So I think the light plant could, but it would be it would be there. They'd have to initiate it. We can't. Yeah, right. They would have to initiate it. We yeah. can't. Right. I mean, we could respectfully ask, but yeah, when they if they initiate it and we yeah. think it's a good idea, we say, okay, how about a, a bigger yeah. contribution in lieu of taxes? To yeah, I mean that. Well, listen, let's be open and clear about that. That has been a bone of contention for years. You know, in terms of um, contra financial contribution to the town. It, that, that that's the way it is in all the communities that have light plants. It's it's usually they have their protections. Issue. Thankfully, we have good rates and excellent service. But but what if we didn't? Well, then you elect new 
people to run the light department. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only you have in Revolution yeah. in Grover. Revolution in Grover. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll cut <laughs> off the power and start selling yeah, candles. Let's cut off the power. <laughs> Pardon my rather sick sense of humor. Um, <clears throat> so, anything else? Yes. Um, again, I. And that's that, all right. And that's just by scanning. So, imagine if I read the document. The <laughs> yes, I, 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 I agree. <laughs> Keep on scanning then. <laughs> <laughs> I like your scanning. Yeah. He's clearly got into the weeds. Very good. One last area that I wanted to. Uh, and respectfully solicit your ideas and maybe hear mine. But um, So one of the biggest bills we have in town of Groveland, like all the other towns, is the school. And we have, uh, you know, a complete structure. We uh, The representatives of the people with the school department are our school mo uh, board members, school committee members, that's fine. Um, should... The past finance directors have had very robust relationships with the school department. Should that be written in to the document, or do we leave that to the contractual? Well, we have, we have language in here that the town uh, administrator, with his budget responsibility, shall coordinate with the school department. Coordinate, I saw that, you know. I just, you know, I just, sometimes, you know, it, when you we, say we robust, haven't had what it do you in mean? a while, but when you get into those years where you might have to have an override and so forth, the complaint that I remember when I was in the school committee is that we, gee, we have no no say in the matter. We have very little say in the matter. We're we're, we're almost powerless. Mm. And I hate to say put well, it this way, but I, in addition to just the school committee, I would love to see an, an extra level of of um, of advocacy for our town. I know that's a bit controversial. Well, when you say advocacy, what do you mean? By well, meaning meaning that uh, you know, if the school committee votes for an override or promotes an override, request an override. A request it, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, can the town administrator have some authority to, uh, you know, to uh, repel that in some way? What do you well, mean repel? Meaning, doesn't agree with it. Well, I I think we covered that, didn't we? When we said that essentially. Um, that the, in somewhere in the document, which I can't quite remember where, uh, that the we were going to tie in with the finance, the the coordinator, or mm -hmm. there would be coordination with the finance committee. Yeah, and that's how you okay. would control it. Yeah. In other words, there's two thirds of the budget, a taxable part of the town is the school. School. Yeah. So. We're expecting the school department to liaise with our financial director and also through, hopefully, the administrator. There were, there's a meeting of minds on the issue. Okay. Uh, that's how I see it. I think, Joe, with all due respect, I think you're worrying about, uh, obviously, for past experiences. Sure, of course. You're worrying about something that quite frankly, there's no way you can legislate that. All you can do is hope that the people who have the authority are a personality that will be able to accomplish this job that you require. Well, I'll, I'll put a very fine point on it. And, and I am. I am the world's number one expert on my own experience. <laughs> so that's what I can offer. The, uh, the overrides, though, they, they basically... Uh, we don't have to put it, if someone requests an override, we don't necessarily have to put it out out to the public for vote. It is a, uh, and I'm not familiar quite with the procedure how an override gets before the, the uh, electorate. Uh, so it's only, I suppose, a matter of persuasion then at town meeting. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because the complaint that I experienced is the school committee, and I don't, I don't mean this school committee, or but school committees. School committees have a tendency to rubber stamp the school department and the superintendent. That those relationships are, are are strong, and there's a tendency to sort of go along a little bit with the superintendent a little bit more than some people may be comfortable with, and that's fine. But when that uh, ugly situation may come up in the future. I hope it never does. 
when there's an override issue, you know, then people will feel better knowing that we have an advocate that may go contrary to the school committee. And I guess all we can do is, is it's just a matter of persuasion then. Exactly. At town meeting. Exactly. Okay. It's all I'm, in the town meeting. That's yep. fine. That's where things live and die. <laughs> we can't legislate any authority. That's right. Okay. I didn't think so, but... Uh, well, because you could abolish town meeting. And again, I've enjoyed my service on the school committee. I'm bringing, out, bringing up a few ugly, but I think realistic situations that... Sure. Uh, you know, I think should well, be well. People go to the school with. committees, get on it for various reasons. What I could see, some people are on it because they're super advocates of education. Well, exactly. Other people, uh, fiscal restraint people, get on it for that reason. Uh, yeah. It all goes back to the voter: what type of person you want on the board. And, That's right. And, uh, the I attitude. Don't, I don't have any recollection on, on my time on the school committee. I'm sorry, on the on the board of selectmen where the school committee did not vote unanimously with the superintendent budget wise good or bad whatever that you know whatever the, whatever your opinion is i'm not saying that that's necessarily wrong but there could be opportunities in the future where there could be conflict well, I, I, well I, the board of selectmen can indeed indicate to your financial administrator or your administrator that they're concerned about the impact on the budget and the tax rate, mm -hmm. and they can convey that to the superintendent as well as the school committee members. Sure. So all of that's got to occur off, how can we say, you can't, we can't legislate that. No. no. But we're, the, way the, the way the agreement works now, I think it's if two-thirds of the town pass the school budget, the, the dissenting town is stuck with it no matter what. That's right. So. Right. So consider now with COVID-19, it hasn't happened, and we, you know, thankfully it hasn't, but, you know, what is the scenario uh, that could develop uh, where uh, at some point in the future the town could experience a, a real drop in local aid? Hasn't happened, but with the, uh, the, the state struggling budget-wise, could that ever happen? So well, that's when I'm glad we're going to have a town administrator in place if that would happen. Well, that's when teachers have to get start getting notified. They may yeah. they may not may not be rehired. And uh, I mean, what we non get non-tenured teachers. The, the the local aid what we get for our town has not been pulled back, and that that's a good thing. So yeah, um, I do worry, but I I get paid big bucks to be on this committee to to worry. <laughs> <laughs> that and all the, all the papers spend you can shuffle. Once, then, <laughs> Joe. Spend it all. That, that and the and travel the, benefits. That and all the scanning you can do. <laughs> That's all I had. Thank you very much for listening to me and, and, and helping me uh, resolve these issues. I really appreciate the work that you and John have done. It's really fantastic. Thank well, you. I think the, the next step we'll just get together and try to condense this. Yes. And, and clean it up. Yeah. And, and, and reflect some of your concerns. Thank you. And, and we're, obviously, we're going to condense it to single space and try to preserve as much space as. Although, if you do look at the bylaws in this town, I think most of them are either space and a half or uh, they're not double space, but. Uh, but they're going to be. It's going to be when it's on the town warrant, it's going to be. A long and copious document. Well, that's when to look through. Well, they better get here early and start reading. <laughs> well, I think it needs to be the first item on the agenda, as yeah, opposed yeah. to the last. Well, <laughs> if you recall the finance bylaw, which w certainly wasn't as long as this, but that passed town, and that was fairly big step for this town. That passed town meeting with a no no debate at all. It, uh, like I said, I think at the one meeting I said they debated raising the stabling fee for 45 minutes to an hour, and then this was next on the agenda, and they moved to approve second, boom, it was good done. Uh, well, if, 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 as Joe has pointed out, if we've done enough of the preliminary yeah. communicating with the public and show how we've agonized over it, as we are doing, uh, people will see that we're trying to do it the right thing. It would be uh, nice once we get this in the final form if it could get posted on the town website. Good right. point. Absolutely people, good idea. People could go to it and right. read it. And read it. 
Mike, Mike has offered the least amount of words in the, in the last few meetings, but his one of the things I really like about what you mentioned several times is coordinated action. We do have silos yep. in town. Right. That, that's and called the picket fence form of town government. Say it again, please. I'm sorry. Picket. In the memorandum, that's the picket fence. Yeah. <laughs> well, elected boards run the town. It's all boom, 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 yeah. boom. And never the twain. If we can meet. fight against that a little bit, and and, and and you know have rely on the town administrator or manager to uh, help um, alleviate that problem, that would be a good thing. So anything you do in this document that says facilitate, coordinate, coordinate, facilitate, encourage, promote, <laughs> those are all good words to put in this document. Blandishments unlimited. Blandishment is, is fine too. <laughs> <laughs> Are we done? So, did you, did anyone see the selectmen's meeting on Monday night? No. So, they interviewed uh, a, a person for the interim finance director position. I heard about it, but I didn't okay. watch it. So, go and watch it if you can, because right. this gentleman probably has the most experience of anyone in the state of Massachusetts when it comes to this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Really? And I'm pretty sure they're going to hire him. And well. he's going to be here for up to 18 months. Oh. And one of the things that he has done in the past is write town charters. And, you know, he knows all about this stuff. So I don't know what the selectman's thinking is. It may be that if we do this and, and give it over to them sooner than later, they may have him look at it. It may help us help our task. What, what's his background? Is he strictly a finance guy or had he been a town administrator? Oh yeah, mostly town administrator, but he has been a finance manager too. I, I, uh, I envision if he d does a good job uh, as a finance, interim finance director, he'd probably be our first town administrator. How things usually work out. He, do, he doesn't want to do that. Oh, okay. He's retired. Oh, okay. So he only does this. Doesn't want headaches. Yeah. Okay. No more headaches for him. Huh? Right. Okay. He, well, that's, that's, that's a wonderful opportunity. So uh, before we think about um, reaching a point where we're providing a document sooner rather than later, I always, of course, want to be very respectful to John and John. In your estimation, when can we reconvene? With uh, two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks will work. Yeah. Okay. That would put us into what's today the twenty before Thanksgiving. Thirty-six. We might have a precedent by then. What do you think? Uh, well, you know, it's interesting. I don't hold your breath on that one, Joe. I'm reading that the, the we might be done with our work before we have the next. <laughs> con con contrary to what you've been reading in the paper, it just came out that uh, a state like Florida is taking their mail-in battle uh, ballots and putting them into the machine. Not necessarily counting them, but it's not going to be like on election night they'll be opening them. In other words, they're, they're processing them ahead of time. So I think a lot of states are doing that, so it may not be as... <laughs> are we ready to adjourn? That's so, 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 well, before I do that, so What's the date November the 3rd sound okay to you? November 10th. November 10th? Yeah, the 10th. Yeah, sounds 10th. about right. All right. So we'll set the meeting for November 10th at 5.30 to 7 mm -hmm. in the fire department probably. And then realistically, realistically, we might be able to uh, we 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 might be able to present our draft to the board of selectmen a week later or a week uh, two on. weeks I after think that. We, we talked about giving it to the department people. As well. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. My my bad on that. Right. I think yeah. I think it would be appropriate for us uh, yeah, to move good to idea. the departments first before we submit it. To so department. when you do this work. Um, do you have it in a Word document so yes. that people can people can make that can be notations? Yep. So if you send it to X Y Z department, well, they can I've I've been concerned about the document. I don't necessarily want them working on if they want to come in and make comments or take a, a paper yeah. document and, and and mark it up. I don't want them. I don't want a matrix to be passed out. Fine. I mean, that's fine. I, if someone wants to copy it, I'd be happy to get, print one out for you. It's a PDF file, so you're not going to be able to manipulate. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Any other thoughts, concerns, questions, things to worry about? 
<laughs> I, I just think if we, we could Do probably worry wart here. You know that, right? <laughs> my 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 concern, not a concern, but I, I I like to think that this would be a, a expeditious process, but a, a careful process, so that we we shouldn't feel that we have to get this done by Thanksgiving no, or true. Christmas Eve or you mm. know. Uh, if it's going to take till the end of December, then yeah. that's the best way. But I think we'll have something for circulation by before Thanksgiving, and then right. Then we got we have to discuss how and when the public and this is going to be presented. And I think with the pandemic going on, public public meetings to explain to people it's going to be difficult. Well, that's why maybe I'll repeat that at the uh, be beginning of every meeting that if people have questions or some input, you know, submit them and we can we can put items on the agenda. I suppose well, we I, could I'm do a Zoom. I'm just wondering whether we should present uh, on the website. Yeah, um, post it. The, a draft document. What yeah. do you think about that? Yeah. They call, they could, if we could get comments, that might be a... Uh, yeah. So that when we are presenting it to the department heads... We At simultaneously time, do that we as put well. Put it yeah. on the website. Good point. Say, this is what we got. What do you think? Anybody okay. like to comment? All right. Is it capable of making comments on the? Uh, Sorry. Can you make comments on? If you post something no, on the website. No, you website? can't make comments, but you can indeed. You call can submit them. And make we'll, we'll put Joe's home well, phone Joe's number on it. Well, Joe's name as chairman <laughs> is there. And th That's th right. I have no question that the phone will be ringing <laughs> off the hook. Six one seven seven nine one two two one eight. No problem with that. People have always been thoughtful. Uh, well, with that said, uh, do I have a motion to, to uh, yeah. motion to adjourn? Second. Okay.